here, but has come back and played well. Brown triple. Brown to the fire. It's Gordon over Reed. Dancing with Gobert. Welcome back to the All Things Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Vic Lopez, as always. And this episode is just going to be me giving some takeaways from Game 5, Nuggets vs. Timberwolves. And I'm going to make this video as quick as possible. So I'm going to start off with just saying, Jokic, Monster Night, 40 points, 13 assists. We know the field goal percentage. I'll have it up here. This was honestly a very close game. And it took a turn for the worst by the fourth quarter. KCP, Aaron Gordon, uh, Jamal Murray, they all had really good games. I think this was a great collective production from the Denver Nuggets. Christian Brown was huge. Reggie Jackson helped some. It was just the only thing missing really was Michael Porter Jr. in this game, but the Nuggets will live with a game like that if they can get all of their other horses just firing, right? If I can even say that. But I think this series has reminded us of a couple of things. One, don't jump to conclusions. Almost everyone except maybe the Nuggets fans were basically out on the Nuggets and people were talking like the Timberwolves were on their championship run. The odds were in Minnesota's favor if you go look at the betting websites. It was like an early funeral for the Denver Nuggets. And I did say on a couple of videos ago that obviously the series wasn't over and... I still said that the Timberwolves would have to earn every single win against this Denver Nuggets team. The Timberwolves were up in a convincing way, winning those two games on the road. It was really looking like the end for the Denver Nuggets, which was basically the bottom line. The second thing that I would say it taught us, all of the sudden, Rudy Gobert is to blame for everything. And the storm has picked up after this last game five, where he just can't escape criticism. And people are saying, you know, Jokic is cooking Gobert. He can't do anything about it. Can't get any stops. You see Draymond kind of obviously talking about that as well. And I'm thinking to myself, who stops Jokic in the NBA? You want to name maybe Embiid, maybe Wembenyama, right? Like, you know, people will, will, will debate those guys. And okay, even if I did give you those two names... That's two guys in the entire NBA that you're going to debate can stop Jokic. I don't think that that's something that Rudy Gobert should be ashamed of. Have you seen the shots that Jokic makes over Gobert? These are not easy shots, and I'm going to be showing them on the screen. These shots are very difficult. Gobert is basically guarding as well as he can without fouling. Jokic in the process, which is also something that people don't seem to notice or, or even mention that guarding a guy like Jokic without fouling is almost impossible because of how strong he is, because of how skilled he is. He can shoot the ball. He can post you up. He can out rebound you. There is just a lot that Jokic can do. So then this turns into, you know, Gobert shouldn't have won Defensive Player of the Year. It should have been Wemby. It should have been Anthony Davis. It should have been whoever else. I think that that conversation is so irrelevant to this. Like, if you want to say Gobert doesn't deserve Defensive Player of the Year, that debate is fair, you know? I think it's fair. Now, what I will say is, just because he doesn't deserve Defensive Player of the Year doesn't mean that he's not doing a damn good job against Gobert as best as he can. I think when people disrespect Gobert and saying that, you know, he's getting cooked by Jokic, it's like, yeah, Jokic is now a three-time MVP. I would say, I don't think a lot of people are going to argue Jokic is the best player in the NBA right now. How is that in any way fair to say that, that Gobert is getting cooked by Jokic as if Jokic didn't cook everyone else in the league? <laughs> like, this dude is undeniably the best player in the league right now. Um, if you want to debate it, it probably comes down to like two other guys, according to MVP ballots and according to probably most conversations you would ask around. I feel like there's no shame in getting cooked by Jokic because everyone gets cooked by Jokic. I think that that gets lost in the mix. I think that it's, it's also a little disrespectful to Jokic himself when people are acting like, oh, just get a stop. 
You know, oh, just just stop Jokic. What are you doing? Like you're you're getting cooked every single play. Yeah, Jokic is really good. He's really good at basketball. What else can we what else are we going to say about that? Eventually, Jokic is just going to show out and be who he is and he's going to ball. He's going to do what he did last night and the night before that. Jokic is just great. I don't know what else to say about that. And I find it hilarious how he becomes the the guy that everyone's going to point the finger at for these Minnesota Timberwolves losses. Gobert was really good in game five. He had 18 points, 11 rebounds. What else did he have in here? He had two steals, two blocks. What more do you want from a guy that everyone says has no bag? Well, he's giving you the points. He's giving you the rebounds in this game. He's doing his job defensively. He just can't stop the best player in the NBA. What more do we want from Gobert? I don't, I really don't understand that. And, and am I saying that Gobert isn't part of the problem? It's an entire team problem. I think when guys don't show up offensively, it's just going to look the way it does. And the Nuggets are looking awesome on defense as well. Have you seen how connected these Nuggets are on defense? Because it looks better than it's ever looked. These guys are rotating almost perfectly to the point where you're watching this entire game and you're thinking, man, not once do I feel like a Minnesota Timberwolves player is getting a good look. Guys get beat on a pick and roll and there's already a guy recovering. There's an option in the corner, but then someone's already cutting it off. The Nuggets have looked amazing defensively and the offense showed up eventually which is something that we had to expect from one of the best offenses in the nba along with the best player in the league so i think it's just a combination of guys not showing up offensively now why don't we when we talk about pointing the finger at guys we could point the finger at who's been the best for minnesota which is anthony edwards why is no one talking about how bad of a game he had 5 for 15 from the field, 1 for 5 from 3 with 4 turnovers to go for it, and Ant's been great in this series in general. But how does this collapse from Minnesota just suddenly all fall on Rudy Gobert? Let's not act like the formula with Gobert hasn't been awesome up until these last few games. They won game 1 with him. Now, you want to say uh, they should try maybe cutting his minutes? I'm not going to disagree with that. But do I think that's going to be the solution to beating the Nuggets? I don't think so. I think if you sub out Gobert earlier, or maybe if they even bench him this next game, and they go with that lineup that they had in game two when Gobert was out, and if that doesn't work, what are we going to say then? Who Who is to blame then? Because you can't blame Gobert since he's not on the floor. So I would love to see them go out there without Gobert and see what it looks like again. You know, because... It was the perfect storm in game two. The Nuggets were off. The refs were really letting it get uh, super physical, right? And that's a great benefit to the way the Timberwolves defend. They're the best defensive team in the NBA. And they were allowed to get super physical in games one and two. And it kind of seems like the refs have taken away a little bit of that physicality. They've been calling a little more fouls. I'm not saying they're calling in favor of the Nuggets, but I just feel like they're not letting as much of the physicality like they did in games one and two kind of play itself out throughout these last few games. So I think it was just a perfect storm of the Nuggets being off. They were rattled. The Timberwolves played great offensively. They also played amazing on defense. And it was just a combination of all of that rather than them just not having Gobert and they're just better without Gobert. That could be the case. You know, I'm not going to dismiss them trying to run some lineups without Gobert and see if that works. But I just find it hard to believe that this entire collapse is because of Rudy Gobert. Because that's what it sounds like when you listen to people talk and how they're pointing these fingers. I feel like this is as simple as the Denver Nuggets adjusted defensively and their offense is showing up, right? Shots are starting to fall. Defensively, they just look a lot better. It looks like they've figured out the coverages for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I think that the Timberwolves have yet to adjust. So, you know, the Nuggets decided to have Jamal Murray come off the ball more, right? Have Aaron Gordon hold on to that a little bit more. Have other guys initiate offense and then let Jamal Murray kind of flow into it off the ball. And I think the Timberwolves haven't adjusted to that right. You know, it looks to me like 
the Denver Nuggets have fully gotten comfortable in this series while the Timberwolves have kind of lost their comfort. It's almost like they've lost their identity. And when their calling card is defense and the Nuggets are starting to hit shots, now it puts pressure on Minnesota's offense and what they can produce as a whole. Because when the Nuggets are clicking the way they have in these last couple of games, really hard to keep up with them if you're not going to stop them. Put some respect on Jokic's name. Three-time MVP now. Best player in the league. The better player won. The better team has been winning these games. It's not all on Rudy Gobert.